here we are then at Snetterton for the classic Formula Ford race. And away they go, then they're going down the back to the next slide. Grab our view here as they tuck up to right the white line and it's things Andrew Smith at the glass being on the lead but it's Stuart Kestabau round the outside he started fourth on the grid it's a good start from the legend of Formula Ford racing Stuart Kestenbaum and it's he got it past Andrew Smith he has it's the pole man Mike Gardner that sits there in third position as they head their way through front and then on to Nelson with the old S's the top three dot the gap Nigel Lingwood he's got a massive gap and then a huge queue of cars for fifth position we'll check that out at the moment as the race starts to fall here and then everyone fears slightly careful well, the top three go great guns though it's Kestenbaum Smith, Smith especially in the Class B car, the older car, he's in his third, Mike Gardner will go through a few of the cars with you as the race goes on, 20 minutes of action ahead of us. Into the final corner here at Snet, always got these parries and gets them out and does the break away now. Smith is looking to give a car to Smith, is that Steve Bradley? Please, that you, yes, not the car, Steve Bradley, this is Alan Fincham. In the uh, number 28 van Diemen, the RS80, then the 34 car, which is Colin Williams, and the PRS. So down the back stretch they come and it is Stuart Kestabel that started to gap Andrew Smith now. After that first lap he had an 8 tenth lead over the number 49 car. He's under pressure now because Mike Gardner dives up on the inside as they head into Brundle. But Andrew Smith defends the line. He stays in front then. The uh, 1973 Van Diemen from the FA 73 for Andrew Smith there. Just ahead of Mike Gardner. Mike Gardner in a 7-year new car. 1980 RF80 Van Diemen for him. Uh, the race leader Stuart Kest about a year older than my guy, he's got an RF 79. Look at this gaggle of cars, they're still going for it through the ball hole down towards Coram. Gardner all over the back of Andrew Smith through Coram, what's the bar? He's a power on then. And the back of the fifth now, it's just starting to break away. That's Fincham, yeah, Fincham ahead. Then Connie Williams dives up on the inside, gets ahead. He goes ahead of Steve uh, Bradley there. So we do that was from the PRS. Van Diemen driver Colin Williams and we, we've lost Keston Baum somewhere between Murray's and Montreal because up, up down the back street side by side between the new leaders Andrew Smith did lead it for a load of moment but Mike Gardner he goes through up on the inside he takes the lead and breaks really late but now so look at the speed he carried through there he got pole position he was so quick through there in qualifying I was watching them this morning he was so fast on that section of circuit Further back, he's got a good scrap on. He's involved in this then. I think he ran it, he can pull down the field. Needed this scandal of cars through one hole. That's what I didn't think when he fought. He breaks late into Murray's. Slightly mucked up his apex there. That's going to allow Alan Fincham to start to close him in now. They head to the front of the top of the hat. He's going to be able to run well. Circulated the two mile circuit we have here. Layout. So it's Gardner that leads from Andrew Smith, but in that short amount of time, Gardner managed to pull out four times. We can see it's round here through the old S. It's Brundle and Nelson where he's really got the speed of Fincham now for third. Up on the inside of Lingwood, and he's got it done there. A good move from Adam Fincham. He's in the uh, 1980 Van D. We just head of Lingwood. Great scrap being led by Bradley then behind him the number 27 car you saw that was Steve Pearce 1978 RF78 Van Diemen as they head through four I think that's six of them and Fincham yes it, we you saw that just went past the uh, similar 1980 machine of Lingwood and there's Bradley then just ahead of Pearce up in that queue was John Nash, another of the Van Diemen's, which is the most of the used car in this series. And it was in for some years in period, wasn't it, in Formula Ford racing. And we have the battle then to watch for We've got fifth and sixth now. We haven't really mentioned one person yet in this race. We really should get him coming up from the back. That's Antonio um, Andrano Medeiros, the 1979 Van Diemen. He's got the Jesus saves car. Number three, watch out for him. He's up to fifth now. And we've got a spin for Bradley. Steve Bradley spins then. We'll have to just take a look and see what happens there. No, there's the deer also. The red car, the Jesus saves car. Watch out for him. He's done in the back. He's now fifth. He um, qualified third of the grid. Just qualified. 
right. The car was um, to low right height. Look at that for Steve Bradley then. He's broken the front nose on his car. I think he'll be heading towards the pit lane. He slowly claws his way back onto the circuit. You're going to have to take a reflex back. Something happened since they went into Napa. So here we go then. Bradley, the second car you shot, somebody dived up on the inside of him. Bradley loses it, I think it's flipped the car. It was John Nash that went past, number 71 got John Nash. Right to pass Bradley there. Right back to the action, what's happening here then? We see on the inside, let's see, I think it's in car, Jake Buxton, the Eldon Mark 8, dives up on the inside of Andy Powell, gets it done, it's just behind John Nash, at the front of all this. Is the uh, number, we've got a spin of a pal, and the front of that queue I was saying is to Chris Stewart, the 1980 Mandy Powell spin, puts his arm up and he joins the circuit. And, uh, Mandy Powell in the Royale RP26, the 26 is Jason, the Alan Fincham, then he flies his car, he's in third position at this race. The 1980 Mandy, then we've got the good battle of a four, because Bajeros now has closed up onto the back. The uh, number 56 car of Nigel Lingwood. Good battle there developing then. Nothing into that. Chris Stewart lost the place to John Nash. John Nash is getting a position then. Bad team to come. There's Andy Powell then recovered. I think he's heading for the bit later. His arm was out the top bit. Let's take a replay at this then. Sideways into shot with Andy Powell. He spun the car. Got it back into action pretty quickly, but heading towards the bit now. That's a lot between Lingwood and Williams. Inside, uh, as they headed into the bomb hole. They make their way out again. Now, that's one of the tracks that the track of traffic yesterday morning. So, the three yellow cars all together, they turn their way into the corner curve. Now, then, the three of them. Led by Lingwood, but it's Pierce, and then really put the pressure on there, up on the inside. And Williams can't get it done up here, so he has to take the time to rain back to the long time in the So, not going to happen the best thing he could have done. Keyline.com Classic Formula 4 Championship race here at Stefton and now we can get a little in the lead for a little while halfway. So here we go. It is Mike Gardner of the lead. You can hear smoke in the background. That's it drifting the general run the 100 circuit. Back to the action. Mike Gardner leads it. From Andrew Smith. Now here comes the Lingwood put the attack back on. I think Pierce has gone past him there, so into fourth. Now Steve Pierce, he passed Nigel Lingwood. Side by side action there, that's John Nash. Duking it out with Chris Stewart. Nash is the inside, he takes the mission, he moves the monster rain on the camera there, Steve. Definitely not the The 
original car there, that's not a any way replica design at all, that is the original car from back in 1979. The Brazilian driver, Andrade Maduro, with a great job, he scored straight from the back of a 17 car grid onto the podium. What else can he do, but it's a slight play on the lead. Over 10 seconds, if he can close that shit, he's doing a very good job. He couldn't start from his grid position. He had a great three way scrap. And Stuart Kessler, of course, his problem, but I think I believe it's um, drive shaft. And, and, but Fincher not giving up on this. He's going round the outside into Brun. A great move, possibly, though. No. Medeiros holds on to it then. He's pulled out a couple of car lengths then. And then they exit Nelson down towards Bromholt. Medeiros defending Finch and we're going to look back, they could have got good scrapping behind, Lingwood round the outside, oh drives the number 8 car of Stewart, Chris Stewart, Lingwood holds on to it, he's been uh, and, uh, dropping back in all this is Colin Williams, he's fallen behind James Funks, where's into Brundle and it probably he was towards the back of that just a lap or two ago great stuff from James Buxton in the Alden he slides his way out of Nelson he's at the front of the queue now it's Chris Stewart behind him Nigel Lingwood and Colin Williams they were the top two in that queue of cars just slide out wide Chris Stewart we have lost John Nash I have to report but now here comes Williams on the inside this is a great scrum in the midfield of this race see that the way through the field in Formula 4 true Formula 4 race and this is a head ring for then onto the brakes it's Chris Stewart getting all sideways in that white car and that's going to allow Lingwood to attack again but no he couldn't do that now that could give the um, run to Colin Williams in the PRS it's, and for the lead my god has made a mistake somewhere and Andrew Smith right on the back of him now in the closing stages of this race can the number um, 49 1973 Van Diemen FA73 of Andrew Smith. He's doing a great job instantly as he attacks into Corum. And he turns through the corner absolutely together. This is great stuff. We can drive your corner with him. Thanks to Andrew Smith for giving us this. Good it. It's, it's and Mike Gardner has to defend the line here. This is going to be a great couple of laps or so. Much time we've got this 20 minute race. It's not long. Gardner has to defend the line. Here comes Andrew Smith round the outside. They head up to Richie. He's doing a great job in this. Tries to put the pressure on the race leader. So, down the centre straight, they start the last lap. Smith in a great slipstream. Round the outside of Art Gardner he goes. Can he get this done into Richie's? Or is the Van Diemen of Gardner going to chop him off again? It's right round for Smith. 
and this could well be him in front as they head now down into Montreal for the final time this hairpin it took over the steer corner didn't it just a couple of years ago somebody's off there that looked to me ah that's Stuart Kestenbaum I think Side by side as Garner taps again into Brundle. Can he get this one done? No, Smith Walker is on the inside. No, he's not anymore. Smith holds on to it. This is classic racing on the classic Formula Ford. In the bomb hole. Smith still leads. Garner gets the tighter exit there, but he can't make anything of it into corner. There's not many places left to overtake, but slipstream is such an important factor of Formula Ford race. And it's a long run to the start line here at Snetterton. Through Morris he goes and he puts the power on. They're coming on the front stretch now. Who's going to take the check and fly? Mike Garner, we can see from the commentary box here, getting a good slipstream. He comes up alongside Andrew Smith. They're going to be side by side across the line. Mike Garner takes the check and flag. What a superb end to that race. Mike Gardner takes the victory then, just by nine hundredths of a second from Andrew Smith. The herd, well that's going to go. Andriano Medeiros, he's just going to be Alan Vincham in that battle for third position. Steve Pearce is going to come through to finish fifth. Six will go to Nigel Lingwood, he's going to hold on to uh, Chris Stewart who will finish seventh. Eighth will go to James Buxton. Ninth, Terry Durden. Tenth, Lackey and Deary. Seventh, Ryan Terry.